Hello and welcome to Reality Check. Tonight, the growing controversy over the Uttar Pradesh government's decision to send hundreds of notices to those accused of rioting to recover costs of the damage during the Anti-Citizenship Act protests. Over 300 notices have gone out in over seven districts so far. The Uttar Pradesh government says that this is not, as the Chief Minister Adityanath called it, badla or revenge. They say they are acting within the law, citing multiple court orders. But Maryam Alvi travelled to Sambal in western Uttar Pradesh, about three and a half hours east of Delhi, to uncover the many questions over evidence and law that surround Yogi Sarkar's notice spree. Sambal, 19th December. Protests against the Citizenship Amendment Act turned violent. Stones pelted, at least one bus was burned and others damaged. Within six days, the first notices went out to those accused of rioting, 59 in all in this district. Five of those notices, all seeking 9.2 lakh in dues, have come to these five men. Amongst them, a retired UP police constable, Muazzam Khan. I was shocked when FIR Sayed Aslam's wife runs a school that caters mainly to schedule caste and Muslim children. Mushir Khan is a businessman and philanthropist who runs a cold storage unit. अगर हम कसूरवार हैं, कोई CCTV में हमारी शकल तो आएगी, कहीं वीडियो फिल्म सैकड़ों बनी उस दिन, कहीं पे तो हम लोग होंगे। अगर संगर समिति का एक भी आदमी, मैं चैलेंज करता हूँ, कोई भी आदमी अगर ये दिखा दे, तो हम लोग जिम्मेदार हैं। हम फिर कसूरवार। The thread that connects all these men, they are part of a local organization in Sambhal called the Sanghar Samiti, which does social work and had planned to organize a protest on the 19th. All of them insist that though they had initially planned a protest for the 19th, they had called it off after the administration asked them to. They all say that they were together at the cold storage unit of Mushir Khan, the head of the Samiti, at the time of the protest. The district administration of Sambhal, which issued the notices, claimed they were sent to actual rioters, identified in video clips. Rasta chalne wale log the, independent log, jo kuch logo ne video clips ho gara banai, unke video clips ko prapt kiya gaya, aur CCTV footage ko dekha gaya, usse unki pahchan karai gayi. Jo patthar chala rahe the, jo dhaato me dande liye huye the, patthar liye huye the, jo aag laga rahe the, unki pahchan karai karke, 59 लोगों को चिन्हित कराया गया और फिर उनको नोटिस जारी की गई। 19 की बात बता रहा हूँ। But Mushir Khan claims the police had virtually held them in lockdown during the protest। जब हम उठे तो हमने देखा घर के मेरे बाहर पुलिस बैठी हुई थी, cold storage के बाहर पुलिस बैठी थी, तो एक तरीके का हमें नजर बंद कर दिया। फिर ये लोग आ गए हमारे घर पे, हम लोग सब मिलके cold storage में कमरे के ऊपर हम जाके � Mushir Khan directs us to CCTV footage from his cold storage unit. The first clip shows them in the premises of the unit between 11 a.m. and 12 noon. And a second clip showed them leaving the cold storage unit building at around 3.11 p.m. Khan says that they did not leave the premises in between this. The FIR states that the stone pelting started at around 1.15 p.m. and the police was able to control the crowd by 1.45 p.m. Others who also got a notice include Aflatoon, a part-time rickshaw driver. Damningly, the picture released by the cops with his name does not match him. ये लेकिन इसका फोटो भी आपसे मैच नहीं करता है। बिल्कुल नहीं मैडम, बिल्कुल मैच नहीं करता। कहीं से कहीं से देख लीजिए। अगर मैच करता तो मैं मानने को तैयार था मैडम। मैं दोषी था। जब मेरा मैच नहीं करते किसी चीज को। we studied several of these notices that were sent out in Sambhal. None of them mention specifically the evidence against them. They simply say that they've been identified on the basis of a police report. They also say that they're acting on the basis of a Supreme Court order and an Allahabad High Court order. It also cites a 2011 Uttar Pradesh government order, which talks about recovering dues from the rioters and which in turn also cites the court orders. 
but it's unclear whether the government has followed court guidelines. The Supreme Court in 2009 said that the High Court may set up a missionary to probe damage, but it is unclear whether the Yogi government has done so. The Supreme Court had also spoken of setting up sitting or retired High Court or district judges as claims commissioners. In Uttar Pradesh, the notices were sent by the district administration. The 2009 order also said that the liability can be set only after evidence is presented linking the rioter and damage. In the case of the notices sent in Uttar Pradesh, the basis of evidence is unclear. The Allahabad High Court in 2010 had said that notices can be sent to political parties or politicians who organized protests and notices can be sent by a competent authority. But the Uttar Pradesh government seems to have sent notices to ordinary people as well. We tried to question the DM about this, but with little success. So, sir, is this a trial before a notice that is legal? No, we have told you that you are doing the same thing. I have told you that the government is a government. We have to do the same thing. And we have to do the same thing. With camera person Sudeesh Kumar Ram, this is Mayam Alavi. For NDTV. Well, joining us uh, tonight on the show, we have with us uh, Vakasha Sachdev, who is Associate Editor Legal at The Quint. Uh, we have Shadan Farasat, an advocate. Uh, we have Vikram Singh, former DGP UP, and Geeta Bhatt, political analyst, supports the RSS slash BJP. Uh, Vakasha, I'll just start with you because I think you also were looking into this. And uh, are there questions over uh, the legality of these notices? that have been sent by the UP government? So I think uh, the big one here is, first off, the basis for any of this has to come from the Supreme Court judgment because the Prevention of Damage to Public Property Act does not include any provisions dealing with this. So where does it all start? The Supreme Court judgment of 2009. As has already been pointed out here, there is a process under that which involves high courts getting mm. involved. They have to uh, be the people involved with this whole process. Right. And only then can that go forward. There has to be a claims commission who has to be a retired judge. None of that has been done in this kind of case. So first off the bat, the Supreme Court judgment has been ignored. Even mm. the fact that they've been sent amounts of liability, that is also specifically guideline number 10 of the Supreme Court judgment specifically says that that assessment of liability also has to be done by the high court. So right. how these notices have been sent out makes... And such speed. And exactly. Literally within days of the of the protests. You've looked at, they've just basically obviously taken the amounts and said of whatever damage has happened and they've not even looked at who was the actual person who did the particular amount of damage. So that's going beyond what the Supreme Court judgment said and then the Allahabad High Court judgment obviously goes in a sense actually beyond the Supreme Court. So I think that's something which obviously uh, yeah. we'll be We'll, we'll talk about in a second. Geeta, but uh, this is the point that I mean, I don't think it would be anyone's case that if there is a guideline or guidelines in place to recover costs from writers, they shouldn't be implemented. But the manner in which it has been done, the speed, the haste, the bypassing of Supreme Court guidelines, the unclear evidence does suggest that this has less to do with law, more to do with badla, as cited by the Chief Minister. Well, uh, Vasuji, uh, you see, you know, just like uh, there has been a report which has been uh, just put up by your reporter, mm. there have been many other media reports also where they, it has very clearly it has been shown mm. that the, there were people who were holding guns, shooting at policemen, and in fact, in no, no, uh, in Merit, where even this. the Merit police officials, uh, they have also that is no, no, the so shooting at uh, policemen has nothing to do with this. This is about recovering costs of damage of caused by so rioters. Out of 100, it is possible there are 3 or 4 people. Out of 100, it is possible that there are 3 or 4 people who actually were not involved and have been sent a notices, but for which the reply has been asked to be submitted. Where people no, who no. have not been involved are innocent, they can put in their reply and ask for an evidence, but at the same time, no, but how we, can this is a larger issue which without has been discussed. Where this has been happening across, you see, there, there, there have been a large number of CCTV footage where we, even we all have been seeing it on, uh, seeing it on uh, media, mm -hmm. and the uh, and the police had based on certain documentary evidence would have placed these notices. There could be, you know, some mistaken identities for mm. which people have time to reply back and to. Okay. Confess that they were not they were not the ones who were actually involved in this. Right. But so at the same time, hmm. the large amount of 
uh, you know, rise, uh, rioting which has taken place is where Popular Front of India has been involved. No, no, now let's not uh, get into Police Popular Front and all that. That's a separate issue. But let me just get Shadan Farsal's view. Uh, just a second, Geeta Bhatt. We must, Geeta Bhatt, we must, we must allow to others to get in as well. Sharan Farah said the point she is making that okay, there may be errors, but you can appeal. No, Does this that is not just, no, this is not just a question of errors. We saw the district magistrate say there that these are executive instructions and we are following executive instructions. Now that's crucial. What is happening is an adjudicating process of somebody being shown to be in the wrong. That can only be done through a judicial process. That's why the Supreme Court judgment of 2009 hmm. says that the police must first prepare a report based on videography. The police has to submit it to the state government. Hmm. In that report, the police must say any damage caused by the police itself. Para 12 of the Supreme Court judgment says it clearly. Okay. Then the state government will submit that report okay. to the high court. Right. The high court will appoint a claims commissioner who is a former judge of the high court who will then determine liability, give his report to the high court, right. after which the high court will give hearing to the individuals who are impacted, that and is the accused. Then and you. only then the liability. Now, all this has been short-circuited okay. and this magist uh, this uh, additional district magistrates are sending notice. Look at the conflict. The ADM is the owner of the property because he's a government functionary. Hmm. So, the owner himself is deciding who is the accused and how much he should be liable for. That can never be a uh, under procedure the, accepted under, the under our constitution. Okay. Uh, now, just to uh, bring you in, uh, Sir uh, Vikram Singhji, that uh, all things apart, Vikram Singhji, is it even practically possible for the police or the administration to assess who is guilty and specifically how much damage they have caused in a matter of days? Mr. Jain, you have raised a very pertinent question. It is not in the core competence of the police to assess the damage, much less to assess and then charge the requisite amount from the person charged. The police are supposed to know about weaponry, fieldcraft tactics, concealment and camouflage rather than about the property and its market value and the damage caused. I think it is best left, I would say, that the solemn orders passed by the Honorable Supreme Court and mm. the two committees, KT Thomas Committee and the Fali Nariman Committee. Mm. Faithful implementation of the orders of the Supreme Court is an imperative. Right. Well, the ADM says that the king can do no wrong and that he is under duty to follow all executive orders. I do hope that the system of natural justice and the fact also remains that the orders of the Supreme Court cannot be flouted by anyone. Yes. Now look, I am the assessor, I am the collector and I am also the dispenser of justice. Where would you find all the three roles merged into one entity? Right. It seems to be absurd on the face of it. I am so sorry, my former colleague in the police was is also charged of this. Then Aflatoon, the rickshawala, I mean he is at least 30 years younger than the real Aflatoon. Then, <laughs> Uh, Mushir Khan, his entry and exit are being, I do hope the police had done their homework. Let us not bungle up things like that in a manner that all of us are branded as sad sacks. Right. I had expected better professionalism from the police okay. to do your homework. And right. if there you find any flaw, tell the government. Because they can come up with an executive refined order, appoint a retired district judge, yes. appoint a retired uh, high court just to do the needful. But as, my, as the court order says. But you know, one thing... Uh, Right. One thing, Geeta, but I want to ask you is that, you know, there is this, this sense that the manner in which this is done is political, that there is a very clear dimension here to why only in this particular instance of this particular riots that such notices have been sent with such haste and followed up so aggressively. If you were to just uh, put up on the screen and now several newspapers are, have started to report on this, including the Indian Express about whether this is selective outrage. For example, Geeta Bhatt, in December 2018, when the Bajrangal right wing went on a rampage in Bulansheher, a police inspector was tragically killed, police chalky vehicles burnt, no notice sent. Rajasthan government under the BJP, Karni Sena protests against movie Padmavat, vandalism happened, fought damage, no notice sent. Madhya Pradesh government again of the BJP, Mansour farmers protest, railway tracks damaged, vehicles burnt, no notice sent. Haryana, Jat agitation, February 2016, 1800 properties damaged, valued at 1100 crores, no notice sent. Again, Haryana, Punjab, during the Dera Sacha Sauda properties, protests, again large scale damage to properties, no notice sent. Only after the High Court stepped in Suomoto were the properties of the Dera attached. So, is politics really driving this? Geeta Bhatt, to put it bluntly, because the rioters 
are not yes. quote unquote your vote well, bank, Vasuji. you are going after them, but why not then in all the other cases? Well, Vasuji, I am just reminded of R.K. Lakshman's cartoon which said that please torch your own vehicle and light up your own house from a uh, Indian taxpayer. So I think at least in principle, everyone will agree to the fact yes. that public property, it cannot be taken in a manner where anyone can come and uh, no, just damage it, vandalize it, burn it and no one should be held responsible. Yes, Geetaji, I am coming to that's your not question. My so question. what I am saying? My question so was on there, the selective action and whether there are there, politics there behind it. There has to be a first time. Sasuji, you are not allowing me to, the point is you are not allowing me to, you know, complete. No, 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 but so you are answering the question. There always right. has to be a first time for everything. If it has not happened earlier, okay. it has not even in 2012 in Kokrajhar, what riots had <laughs> taken place in Congress government. I mean, we never saw any any of the political bigwigs or uh, anyone asking that why uh, there was no compensation. Uh, uh, no, no, but I am asking time. you. So, these kind of counter I'm allegations you, what happened in a Congress state or whether on a BJP. No, so no, you but can because also I'm keep asking you of the BJP that uh, all this the outrage. Congress states where these no, no, types because, of rights took place. Because so Geeta Ji, because you are getting so outraged. One second. Because the BJP is getting so outraged about the fact that no, public property is being outrage, damaged and that it must be reclaimed from rioters. Where was the outrage in December of 2018 when mobs went on a rampage, burnt a police chalky, burnt police vehicles and killed a policeman? Where was the outrage then? Vasuji, that is what I was answering. It is the same question you asked me earlier also and I that is what I was answering. That there, is a, there are similar various number of uh, such kind of riots which had taken place. Muzaffar Nagar riots had taken place in 2013. That uh -huh. time there was Samajwadi party's government. Whether such a did anything, uh, this but I am asking about your own also, government. I am not asking the Samajwadi Party place, government. They can be. They, this is so not about the I, Samaj. The Samajwadi Party government, government is not sending out these government. notices. No. Any of us. It is everyone's government, Vasuji. You need you need to be corrected okay, first on that. Time for it is day. everyone's okay. government. Okay, basically, not my government or your government. It's a democratically elected government in a state and in the center. Okay. So uh, 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 whatever, Akasha, whatever decision, okay. it, right, Geeta Ji. Whatever let flaws it, have been right. put uh, first forward, time for everything. They can be discussed, but I let us that, not try that to divide. It doesn't really work when you're looking at the situation ten years from the time the Supreme Court judgment came out. You're looking at a situation eight years from when nine years from the Allahabad High Court judgment. You're looking at a situation eight years onward from a supposed UP government notification. These you can't just say it's a first time for everything here, I think. And that's important here because especially if you were following what the actual rules said, yeah. then maybe you could say a first time for everything. We are not even following what the actual rules are saying, then you can't say that then it doesn't work. It shows and then that if you're you if you're not following the procedure and you're doing it in selective cases, that sends a very particular Then that message. question mark over the political intent does come in. But uh, Shadan, before I come to you and I come to Vikram Singh, Shadan, you made the point that the police and this is something perhaps in the language of the court order that you could read out yes. that seems to have got bypassed and let's play those videos because there are also videos of the police also causing damage. They have gone and broken it appears through CCTV and other footage the properties and belongings of those who have been accused uh, or just as an act of reprisal uh, we also have you know the damage that has been caused by the police in other locations like even in JNU for example in the library, I beg your pardon, in uh, Jamia, in the library, uh, there's been damage caused. So, the yeah. court That's right. so order the addresses that. 2009 judgment, para 12, uh, clause 7 says, the police shall immediately inform the state government with reports on the event, including damage, if any, caused by the police. Mm. So, it's while preparing a report, damage of all kinds, including if any caused by the police have to be reported mm. and then an independent high court through a claims commissioner determines who is liable for what. Now, right. A, you have uh, uh, bypassed that process and B, the police damage has been completely sidelined. Nobody is talking about it. That's something which uh, Vikram Singh Ji, you know, there was one point in the one of the notices which seemed... I don't know what the right word to put it, it almost had an underlying sadistic quality to it where the police, if I could just finish the question, where the police are recovering costs of the lathis that were used during the riots and the batons and the shields. You know, so again, there's, there's nothing wrong, if you're going after rioters by all means, but if you make it so one-sided and with such a question mark over the legality of it, that's the problem.
my first that I totally agree with uh, your respected Gita Ji. It's my government, it's our government. But our government, I would expect that do uh, we do our homework very well and implement the rule of law in letter and spirit. I wish we had done our homework and then implemented these provisions. One. And the police are also expected to use their equipment for which they are trained. And if I were to lose my pistol or break my grenade unnecessarily, the cost will be recovered from me and not from the people. See, who is the aggressor and who is the aggrieved? Please understand. If by my stupidity or poor training, I lose my weapon or break my weapon, break mm. my lati, then not by the public if I do it myself or by my own folly due to poor training, I am liable. If there is, of course, a different reason that the public overwhelmed the police party and broke the lattes and the cane shield. Hmm. Again, it is a question mark on the training of the police. Why did, how, what were the circumstances under which they were overwhelmed by the public? Hmm. What preventive action did you take to cover yourself up and defend yourself? Why did you allow the people to outflank you? Right. And the question is even more important when the people are unarmed. Against unarmed people, you're not supposed to be overwhelmed like this one. Then the second question is that there is no provision of summary proceedings or court martial proceedings in the civilian administration. Hmm. It has to be by the rule of law, as Mr. Shadan has very lucidly explained, that it has to be within the mandate and the ambit of the orders passed by the Honorable Supreme Court. It cannot be because I don't uh, like your face, I can charge you with, if you are really serious, the Gangster Act and the Makoka do empower you to seize all movable and immovable property. But that, of course, is a decision that has to be taken by the government. Right. Gita ji, what about that point? The Supreme Court says if police has also caused damage, they need to pay. But we are not seeing any notices or any action about that. Gita ji? Well, well if, if that is the case, yes, yes, Vasuji. You see, if that is the case, if that is the case, yes, there are. If you know such, if there are, if this has happened, then these questions can be raised and they can be put forth in front of the Uttar Pradesh government. But at the same time, hmm. there we have also seen documentary proof where there have been you know uh, media vans which have been burnt and there have been vehicles which have been you know torn. Yes, yes. So if that the is that Uttar is Pradesh not the police question. Has video the documentation question is about and police. Seen, and there are people who have been involved in it. So why it should not? No, the no, no, point question, is that my some, question that now one of this the panelists was questioning that why is it that it is the first time? There is no justice. There is no justification first time. So if suppose the Samajwadi Party government no, has no, no, not, that or is the Congress government has not done it. The question it was on the police because the Supreme Court government is there since 2009. Okay. That time there was Congress government and there were many okay, riots okay. which we are deflecting, took place. But you know, even but in Haryana, that time the riots at Tehsita Puri. So let's not put forth it this way. That okay. Yes, if there are certain, okay, if there is a lack anywhere that needs to be put okay, forth. Shadan, the government needs to be questioned on okay, that. Shadan, but at there, the same time, it the, should not be a. It, you cannot just recourse? blanket it and say. Okay, Geeta ji, I need to move on. Have, you know, Shadan, what is the legal recourse now to those who've got these notices? They can move the court. Are you planning to move the court on this? I think the. In, I mean, not so much personally, but I think these notices can clearly be challenged in a mm. high court of Allahabad mm. on the ground that listen, they are in clear violation of what the Supreme Court prescribes. Okay. I think that's a clear cut because there is no other legislative backing to these notices. It's not as if they are under issued under some section of some act because there is no act. It's only the Supreme Court. Well, the UP judgment. government says that they have their own government order of 2011. The so 2011 order itself quotes the Supreme Court judgment. Right. So if you have not understood and read the Supreme Court judgment properly, bad luck for you. So really speaking, these all these notices should be challenged in the appropriate high court hmm. as the basis being that these are contrary to both the text and the spirit of the Supreme Court order. Okay. So there are two, two things to look at actually. In fact, the Supreme Court judgment specifically also said that there need to be amendments to the Prevention of Damage to Public Property Act. Now the guidelines, in the absence of those amendments, you have to go squarely within the 10 guidelines laid by the Supreme Court. And as we've already pointed out here, you've gone beyond that. The Allahabad High Court judgment, which itself also doesn't even apply here, mm. I would argue, mm. that also goes beyond the scope of the Supreme Court judgment. So that's also of no relevance to them. And the UP government order 2011 cannot be used to create law. Right. That can only be done by a legislative assembly or by the Supreme Court in limited circumstances. Right. So the law itself has yet to be amended. And you're saying that till such time, any state government, any government has to go only by the Supreme those 10 guidelines. by the Supreme Court guidelines and that's I think the big question mark over what has happened in Uttar Pradesh. Anyway, thank you all so much uh, for joining us on Reality Check. We're out of time. We'll have to leave it there. Thanks so much for watching. Good night.